New numbers show that on average, women in California make $7,000 less a year than men. It's the widest gap in 15 years. And even when a woman is the boss, it doesn't necessarily mean she's paid equally, like the founder of Jimmy Choo. Tonight, only on Five, Betty Yu on how a Bay Area entrepreneur is trying to shatter all that. Tamara Mellon knows how to build a global empire. She co founded Jimmy Choo, a luxury shoe brand, in 1996. But she learned the hard way. You know, when I was 27 years old and I founded Jimmy Choo, I wanted to make beautiful shoes, and I really didn't consider what it was to be um, a woman in the workplace. Mellon was a major shareholder and the chief creative officer. But in reviewing paperwork in private equity deals, she discovered she was getting paid less than the men who worked for her. It's very hurtful, actually, because you my blood, sweat, and tears was in that company. She was the only woman on the board at Jimmy Choo, and the board set her salary. She says she was told no to a raise. There is some irony there, right? That you're building a brand for women with no women on the board. I, isn't that crazy? That is, that is, I know, the craziest thing. And, you know, if I could tell my younger self today one thing, I would have said, you know, I would say, speak up. And normally it takes British brands 20 years to come across the ocean. Mellon is speaking a lot these days as an advocate for equal pay for women. She recently spoke about her experience at the Shatter Summit at the Battery Club, featuring influential Bay Area female entrepreneurs, hosted by venture capitalist Shelley Kapoor Collins. The problem is that um, women need their own network. Right? So men raise for men, they give to men, and now we need to take that and we need to facilitate a girls network, if you will. That's why Kapoor Collins started the Shatter Fund in San Francisco last year. It invests solely in women-led businesses. Today, only 6% of all venture capital investors are women, and only 3% of investor funding is given to female founders. When there is a woman involved in the investment decision-making process, such as I am, a female entrepreneur is two and a half times more likely to get the capital that she needs to start her business. Just ask Lynn Perkins of San Francisco-based Urban Sitter, an on-demand app connecting parents with babysitters. But when there are women investors in the room, especially those that have children, it's a lot easier to sell the emotional part of, of what we're doing and why we're motivated. Kapoor Collins invested 25 grand in Lynn's startup, which now serves 200,000 users nationwide. Today, Mellon is at the helm of her own namesake shoe brand, an e commerce business. It's run by a female CEO. I pretty much have a female team, except for three people. Um, and we're very conscious now about how we build the culture. Like when I started Jimmy Choo 20 years ago, we didn't know what culture was. Her advice to young female bosses who find themselves outnumbered in the valley today? Ask yourself, who's the woman at the table? Or who's the woman going to be at our table? In San Francisco, Betty Yu, KPIX 5.